afternoon, welcome to today's video and today we're continuing with the F1 and what I want to do is get to the power switch now the power switch is behind the front panel on the front and it does seem to be a little bit hidden away so I'm going to see if I can get to it from underneath the unit because what I want to do is to perform some cold tests on it. In other words, I want to see if it works, or if there's continuity across it, or if it's open circuit, and also if it needs it to give it a bit of switch and contact cleaner. Now I've noticed that there are these screws holding this bottom plastic piece in, and there is a big RF shield underneath, so I'm hoping that by removing that I get access to the switch itself so it seems that the switch is quite isolated so yeah that should be all of it uh, looks like we've got a circuit board in the way here this RF panel is held in here or the interference shielding whatever you want to call it I'll put the screws for that over this side so this side so we've got one here Uh, one here, okay. and one here. So hopefully that should. There you go. So it lifts up this side and it hooks in this side. So lift up, push back, remove, and there we go. And we're now exposing the underside of the deck itself. We've got this board here and that's held in with two screws. So, and this board should lift up, ever so gently lift up, and it looks like we do have, yeah, we do have a little bit in the way of that one, so let's see if that exposes the switch at all. So, the switch. It's actually here, that's the switch right there. And it is shielded with this little shield. So I'm just gonna turn the lights on, get a bit more illumination on this, that's better. And we can actually see what we're working with. So, does this pull enough out of the way to allow me access or do I need to remove some of the connections. There's a red one here, which doesn't come out of the way at all actually, because that isn't a connector on the board, but it does go to the other side here, so I should be able to pull this one out here. And if I go back down again, does actually give me quite a bit more leeway as you can see and I can unplug this red one this white this yellow one and this white one at least I think I can unplug this white one yes there we go and that just leaves us with a couple there, but they can hopefully stay out of the way, like so. So we then have access to this, 
and I'm trying to see if there is a way I can actually get this out of the way. I've got a feeling I've got to get this board out of the way. So to get to the power switch, it looks like you've got to strip it down a fair amount. However, I may not have to go too far because I've got this here, which will allow me to at least test continuity. So what I'm going to do is pop this cover off, get the multimeter, pop the multimeter on there, moment the switch should be at the moment it should be should be open circuit I'm wondering if these will be enough to get in there so at the minute swap those around actually minutes that should be open circuit because the switch is open Hold those in place if I close the switch so there's a possibility I'm not actually making contact with the terminals on the switch so what I need to do is find something that I can stick into that connector which you just shove into there. Uh, I can't find anything immediate. Let's have a look and see if we've got some wires that we can poke in. Actually, this will work. A bit of solder, so. So, off camera, we'll just snip a bit of solder, poke it into there. Do the same with the other one, like so. Put that into there, like so. Keep the two completely separated and positive onto there. Should do it and do it like this by wedging it in with the solder. So that's wedged in. So power. And if that's to be believed, if that's to be believed, we have. So that's making contact inside the socket there. So that's now making contact with that. And there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. So. Exercise that switch a bit. Not that this will make any difference. So. so that is currently in the on position and nothing. I think we've got a duff switch. Now, to verify that, I'm going to have to strip this down properly. So, this will have to come out of the way completely. 
that is held in with this red connector. White, large white, that little one which is connected elsewhere, but that will give me hopefully enough leverage to get out of get that out of the way. So we'll just pop that back there gently. What I need to do now is flip the unit gently over, making sure not to crush that circuit board. And we've got the four holding this in. And four. There we go. That should come out like so. And then we've got this connector and this connector now out of the way. So that's our top circuit board. Could put that out of the way. We've now got this circuit board to get out of the way, and that's held in with one and two. And connector here, which goes to the front panel, can move out the way. And I think that is actually, yeah, that's ready to go. So that can move. Now we have the board at the bottom obviously which is still connected in because it is still connected into the front panel but we now have this exposed so what I should be able to do is put the unit onto its side and I should be able to hopefully expose the switch itself and the actual connectors on the switch So it's a little hard to see, but we have this piece in the way, which actually goes all the way to the back of the machine. And it looks as if I remove, if I potentially remove this, there's another one on the front behind the front panel. But if I come down here and remove the screw for the front panel. You do have to strip this down a heck of a lot to be honest with you. The front panel should gently move away like so. I don't want to put too much strain on anything. But it now exposes this screw here which if I do this, okay, like so, that allows me to sort of Apart from here, which is held in with a single screw here, which we will just remove. There we go. There we are. And that exposes the switch completely. So we need to remember that this is there for a reason. And we can now look at the actual contacts on the switch itself. Got one. So these are these longer ones are going to be input. So input from this little board here. Which you can't see as it's out of shot, but I'll bring that forward. Input from this board here. 
and this shorter one goes to the switch mode power supply. This looks like a power distribution board for the LCD vacuum fluorescent, sorry not LCD, the vacuum fluorescent display on the front of the machine, including these what I think are backup batteries. It has its own fuse, which is which is there. So there are the batteries. There's the fuse, looks absolutely fine. Um, it's 250 volts at not a huge amount of ampage. Uh, T315 milliamps, so not a huge amount of ampage. And this literally just looks like a little distribution board, which obviously powers this panel at the front and the clock module, which is currently out of view. Sorry, the tuner module, which is, well, the tuner sort of set module, which is there. You can see the connectors on it. This bottom board, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what that does. There is a very large, what looks like a microcontroller on it, so that's probably going to be something to do with... Some, there's actually a clock chip on there as well, by the looks of it. Is that a clock chip? Yes, it is. That's a clock chip. So that's this board here is probably the main microcontroller board. That's obviously the input board there. Anyway, back to this. So what I should be able to test is continuity across both of these connectors, both of those terminals. So first off, let's check continuity across the neutral side. So we need to do that and that. So with the switch open, no continuity. Close the switch. And here. So they look like they're fine across, say, this one and this one and this one to this one. However, let's check it over there. That's open. 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 It's become open now. It's weird. So that's open there and open like that. Close the switch. It's Registers is open or closed, depending on where you touch it on the solder. Let's actually whip this switch out. So there's two screws holding it in at the front. And uh, that's the switch completely removed. Solder joint wise, it looks okay. What I am going to do is Put in some switch cleaning lubricant inside of it. Okay, that's inside. And I'm going to work it backwards and forwards now. Like so.
Right. Now what I'm going to try is I'm going to plug in, hopefully I've got all, all of this in a shot. I'm going to plug this into this little power distribution board. So one way it'll go in to be honest. So that'll go into there like so. Now let's see if I can find some clips. So I'm looking for some flying clip things. There's one. There's another. Twisted around everything I seem to have in the background. Oh, that's useful. I've actually found another glue stick as well, so that'll be handy. So, black onto... So this terminal here is the one that we want power on, so I'm going to put black onto there. White onto here. Like so. So white, connect that to my positive. Like so. Keep that out of the way. So black to negative, what I'm going to do as well is turn this to alternating voltage. So this should be an alternating signal coming into this. So onto there. And white onto here. Make sure that they do not touch or hit anything metallic down there switch is pressed in. Now I'm going to take the plug plug it in and we have 240 at the switch so unplug Turn the switch into the off position, plug the switch back in, zero volts, unplug again, turn it on, two forty, unplug, disconnect from here and here. And get this out of the way. Always turn the multimeter off when you're finished with it to save the internal battery. Disconnect this from here. And we're going to put this back into the machine. It seems I wasn't getting any voltage out of it last time. So it seems that giving it a bit of a clean may have done me some good. So I need to find the little black sheaf that I had is around somewhere. There it is. So that will go over the wires here and here. And then over the switch itself. The switch itself will go back into the machine. So you can see here it's going back in the way that it came out. And we have screw going into here, kind of. I need to move that back a bit so I can get a visual. So screw into here. That's going a bit funny angle. 
that's better so that goes in like so gently does it once you get one part way in we can hunt out the other one which is literally just there that can go back in as well to there so that should meet up oops back out back out back out that should meet up with this one here in that's in and this one is also in there we go so make sure that everything is still covered with this that's definitely important don't want that poking out the front as it is at the minute so there and that's how it was when we came to it next thing that we need to do is to put the side piece back on and that is currently here so we have that coming in quite literally like so so we have actually you can see it here there's two holes here which connect with two holes on this rear plastic piece they go in at the back like so and the whole lot just settles in sort of there you go so that's settled in there got that here if you look at the other side for reference you can see that the panel goes behind there like so So, uh, like that. There we go. So now we can screw that one in at the front here. So that will go in like so. There we go. There we are. Now we got this circuit board here, which we took out earlier. That was one of these, I think. So, yeah, there we go. So that one went that one's, oops, there and there. Now you will notice that there are other points on here that it should be screwed to the main board as well. They are currently not screwed in because they are the points where we put on the, I think it's actually the RF shield that it's built onto, or the underside shield. There we go. Now what we can do is we can bring our front panel around, feed the loom back through conduit slightly, push that back into place and we can screw, starting off with this side, we can put our front panel back in as we don't need to hopefully move that off again so that can go back in like so. There we got one, there, and flip her over taking care with that board underneath and two there we go now we have this underside board and what I'm going to do with that is to actually secure that in place in advance of doing anything else 
So this board went in like so. There. Now we have that big RF slash underside shield. So what I'm going to do is trial fit that back into the machine. Mainly so I can see which screw holes I need to keep free. So it's these two at the front I need to keep free. So that can come out and off again. And we can screw in this one and this one. So you actually see that this, these two have sort of like um, solder around them, which I usually think it means it's sort of either a earthen or static discharge point, which would make sense because this one looks like a microcontroller board. That looks like a clock circuit, no jewels. Um, that's a quartz clock, I think. Hence probably why there is this clock controller, uh, clock chip, sorry, uh, clock module there, developing obviously a clock which synchronizes this chip here, which I think is a programmable circuit chip thingy. Uh, it's basically the chip that you use or is used when setting the timer. So it is literally a programmable clock slash timer chip. And that goes back on like so. And there's actually nothing else that you need to do under here. So you can put your shield back on, which goes in, tucks in here. there and just slides into place. You've got one, two, three and four. So those can go back on. So there's one. Over diagonally for number two. Uh, over here for number three. you might not see on camera but it's at the back of the unit and then down for number four like so and there we go and I could even be uh, brave enough to put this back on so there we go, this one uses the little black screws that we had, so we'll put those into place, ready to go. There are one, two, three, four, five in total. There we go, and this one this one this one down here this one over here and then finally this one right at the very back There we go. Now we can flip the whole setup over, making sure that you keep all screws out of the way. And what we can do now is we can actually start plugging things back into this board. So this one goes up to the top board, this one. So we've got this red one which goes here. A uh, little yellow one there, little one underneath there, that goes here, this one goes up to the top board, this one 
I think there's also a top board one as well, as is that. This large one here comes from the front panel and it seems to go very near that microcontroller, which suggests that that's probably for input. So that's input from the front panel buttons, which would make sense to go to that microcontroller or in the general vicinity. And then you got this one, this one, and this one, the top board. We can actually confirm that. Here is our top board. Here are the three connectors of, I think, this one, actually. That goes elsewhere. That might... Let's do a double check. Because that might, 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 might go to... Yes, that goes here. So this one, or is it this one? This one goes here because that's obviously going to be power supply for this one. That's out of our way. Uh, that one is power supply for this board at the bottom. That's why it has relatively low voltages on it. There we go, that's in place. Big red one to the top. There, that sits in like so. There we are. There we go, so we've got two screws to hold that in place. So two screws to hold that in, there we go, so that is there, and here, there we are, all in place, now we have the top board, so that's going to be this one, I think. And also, this one, which is lost in here, that's annoying, I've watched it in, so I can't actually get to it anymore. I need to release this board to get it out, so rather than stress cabling and components, if in doubt, it's literally just two screws, it's two screws, of relative freedom to get that out of the way. See, out it comes, out of the way it goes. Keep those two well out of the way. You can also take the opportunity just to rearrange these wires underneath so that they are nicely out of the way. Also make sure that nothing is unduly crushed or restricted. So that can then go back in like so. There's a little, where is it? There's a little bracket there, which this actually slides into, like so. And then that sits in snugly into there. Then we have, obviously, our two screws to hold that in place. So we have this one, we also have one over the other side here, all in place, so we've got this one out of the way, this one is out, now we've got our top board, which is this one, so that goes in just there, like so, and that just sits in like that. You then have this connector, this one, 
this big red connector here, which comes from the bottom board. That looks like data connect data connection. We've got this one at the top, which comes in here. So those two are different sizes to make it a little bit easier. That can stay nice and flat out of the way in this little channel there. There we go. We've got that one ready. This one also ready. So what we can do now is screw this into place. So we've got one here. So we actually have four to put into there. There, here, like so, there we go, and one more, ah, yes, there it is, if I can see it, it's escaped to the, that side of the desk, and into there. Next thing is we have this board here. So we've got, let me see if we can see that on the camera. Yes, we can. So we've got this board here, which is gonna go onto these two points here. So we've got these screws, which I left in there on purpose, just to move out the way temporarily. We also have the two black screws on the mains input. So we'll take those off those to one side and there so that can come through the machine make sure you've got it in the right way and then you can just put your black screws in to the mains connector at the back here like so and like so. There's something quite nice about putting putting something together that you've been working on for quite a while. It just sort of makes everything just come together that little bit better. I've also got this little um, nice little shield to plonk on here as well. So yeah, there we go. That can slide in there. So that's ready to go back on. I've also got this here rather fragile looking thing, which actually goes over that. So what I'm going to do is to get that in advance, put that over there, ready. Like so. You can see here where it's gone a bit brittle. And I'm not convinced that will go on completely ever again. But, because it was there originally, I want to try and ensure that it stays there on reassembly. Because that was how it was when it came out of the factory. And conveniently, actually, there is access through here and down the bottom to actually get to it. So what I can do is get that in and aligned. So there and there and there. So let's see if we can get that in sort of into position. So we can feed this through the circuit board possibly. There we go, like so. Just move that gently till it finds the hole that it's going to screw into. There we go, that's screwing in there. So gently does it. 
I don't want to do that one up fully because I want it to be in a position where I can move this around. That's actually going in quite nicely now. And the bottom one. Now to do that, I'm actually going to put the unit up like so. Just make sure that everybody can see still. Yes. And because I've got the magnetic screwdriver, I'm going to go down and into there and start screwing. Oh, that's gone through, so that actually hasn't gone into the screw hole. So what I need to do is just there. So I need to just gently push that down a little bit. There you go. And a little turn, whoa, little turn. Oops. And I think let's have a look. Yeah, that's in. That's in. So we can now do up this top one. Like so. Now we can bring this back down, make sure that that's firmly in place, and we can lock it back together. Kind of, yeah, sort of like that, I think. There we are. That's kind of how it was, I think. So it sort of goes. Yeah, that sort of comes up like that, and also up at the back, and sort of goes in, yeah, like that. There we go. And that is back in place, as it should be. Now we have this one, which will go down into this nice little cable management, or natural cable management, sort of being naturally designed into the case. Like so, so that can tuck under there. And that will plug in down here. It's only one way it can go. Like so. And we have this one. Now, ideally I should be putting this all back together, but just for the minute, to make sure that it works, we're going to plug this in to AC in like so. We're going to put this little base back on. So this is actually our shield, which stops anything shorting out. And it's plastic, so it should just either slide on or clip on. We can actually slide it like that, and then that's nicely in place. And that can then rest just rest there out of the way of everything that's plugged in there. You've got a couple of connectors on here. You've got three in total actually. So you have, if you move that to one side, it can actually be tested outside of the unit itself. So we have this one, which goes into here. This one that goes into the bottom logic board, so that's obviously power for that. That's that little black one. That's power for well, this main board. You've got this little one here, which goes there. And that actually means that we can have this power supply sat outside of the deck whilst we test. So, power supply is off. Unit is plugged in. Power supply is on, and we have a small explosion. Something has gone pop. That's good. <laughs> oh dear. So, what went to pop? Well, that's more than. That's a lot more than we've had out of the unit previously, so. That certainly is 
that certainly is an advancement. So let's uh, unplug it, have a look at what has gone wrong. And I can immediately see what's gone wrong. If you remember me previously, in a previous video, saying that I think I had some issues with one of these, I think these are fusible link resistors. Well, it looks like that that, this one, has actually blown. There is a rather large, yeah, there you go. There is a rather large chink out of it. So if I can zoom into it, and if I move this across there, then pan up slightly and focus, hopefully, come out a little bit, you might be able to see it. So this one has got a big chunk out of it. That is what went pop and I've got a feeling that there's either a continued issue on this board or these were past their best. However, it does mean we're now getting power to the unit, which is far better than we were getting previously. So the next thing I need to do is to order in something to replace that. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.